that one of the ways of understanding what I am about to present to you, despite the truth that we have just come for our Thanksgiving, is that we need to gain knowledge as we prepare for the new year. Okay? And I want you to have this culture and this knowledge into the new year. Are we here? Now, success with honor is a scripture in Proverbs chapter 3. And I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 10 if we're there. Proverbs. Everyone please open to your Bible. Oh, we are not actually taking anything likely. Avoid every distraction. Open your Bible and listen and take note and write down the scriptures I'm reading to you today. We are not getting younger. My son forget not my law. Is it in your Bible? It's like you gave your child an instruction on the way the child should go. And the child decides to ignore your instruction and do what he wants to do. Will the child be safe? David was speaking to Solomon. My son, forget not my law. But let thy heart keep my commandment. He didn't say, let your head. He said, let your heart keep my commandment. Let your heart keep my commandment. Let your heart keep my commandment. So it's going to be a decision that must live with you internally as a culture. David said in Psalm 119 verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Do I have a witness? That word have I done what? That word may happen. So what's the secret of David's achievement, exploit? It is the word of God in his heart. If you are going to be a successful Christian on, in this age, one of the obligations and responsibility you, dis, you should do is to keep God's word in your heart. That word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against you. So when there's a temptation to sin, the word of God will say, remember what will happen when you sin. And it will shift. Go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Say, my son. Forget not my law. Put, let, but let thy heart keep my commandment. Verse 2. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Are you hearing me? That's an honor of Ephesians chapter 6 that Paul was explaining the Holy Ghost. Honor your father and your mother so you shall live long. When you keep my word and instruction you will not be an ex millionaire Because the path of the just man shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. If it is the word of God and the life of God that is guiding your life, God can never be abstract or be, be passive in your life. Are you here? It's an honor to know that every word of God you obey is you the blessings of God. So the condition for, 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 for the blessings of God or riding in the, pres, the prosperity of God or the treasure room of God is compliance to what God has asked us to do. And you see, what God asks you to do is, is, is left to your choice. Praise God. The word is for everyone. And that's why 
no matter what is happening to you in life, there will be a place where you have missed it in your relationship with God. Are you still here? Verse 3. It didn't end in verse 2. Let no mercy and truth forsake thee. That is a command. Let not mercy and truth. Do not allow any situation of life to compare you to take to lies. The challenges of living with lies is that they can only give back to lies to cover lies. Truth can be very dangerous. Are we here? Truth can be very dangerous. I was checking on something and one of the things that was revealed that it is better it is better not to make Patrick Otolu angry. Whatever that will make me angry must be very, very serious. And if it is an enemy that will make me to be angry, that enemy will be in danger. Because I know that there's a place in me that when I react on a thing, heaven will respond. And I know my father in the Lord once warned me. He said, never use this mouth to curse anything. It has been given to you to bless. Praise God. And the only way not to be so angry and begin to curse is to have a culture of mercy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But in the time not to let go and to express yourself, you will find yourself angry and you will sin against God. That was the ministry of Elijah. Elijah, when he gets angry, will cause anything. He will call fire. So he couldn't save anybody. He killed everybody. Praise God. God has given us so much power. So much power. But there can be misuse of power. In the new year, you have to live in different kingdom culture. You have to live a life of mercy. Are we here? Even if the world around you is calling you fool. Let them call you fool. So that God can honor you. You are only obeying God. Christians sometimes I believe to be weaklings. Simply because they allow God to have his way. Keep allowing God to have his way. Let the world begin to call you names. It doesn't matter. Are we here? The Bible commanded, be angry, but do what? Sin not. So do not keep an anchor for a longer time. It will come because you are human. But do not allow it to extend and take you to sin. Let no mercy and, and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Do your neck like this. Bind them. Don't, I didn't say your head, your neck. Like you are putting on it. Okay. Put mercy and truth on your neck. As a, as a, as a chain. You, you see how the women dress this morning. I was asking my wife. The way this our mothers dress. Eh? They dress more like millennials. And I told her. We see your Thanksgiving today. Or oh, many of you will pull your clothes today. Praise God. Put on mercy and truth as a supernatural necklace on your neck. He said, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. That's how important this is. Don't not just try to have your way. Don't always feel it must fall as I want it. No. You will miss God. You will miss God. You see, when God judged David, okay, who told Solomon distance, what Moses, what David saw was that he became unhappy. David knew that God withdrew from him. The presence of God left him. Are we here? And that was why he wrote Psalm 51. He went to God and said to God, 
Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. I know I have sinned. You can take the kingdom. You can take everything. But do not take thy Holy Spirit away from me. And he said to God, let the spirit, the bond that you have broken, rejoice again. In that joy, disappear. The greatest thing money will never buy for you is joy. Joy. And joy is as a result of living a complete kingdom life. Come on, are we here? You remember that Jesus said, when you come to the Lord to do your sacrifice, and you remember you have something against your neighbor, he said, drop it at the altar and go and make peace. God doesn't see what you bring. God sees the heart behind what you bring in. So anything you are going to give to God that your heart does not rejoice at, does not have the blessings of God. I will see here. Why do you leave? Verse 4. Okay. Verse 4. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You understand it now. So shall I find favor in the and good understanding in the sight of God. And my verse 5. Trust in the law with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Verse 6. In all thy ways, in all thy ways, in all you do, in all you are well, in all your challenges, in all you have your, your pleasure. What did he say? Acknowledging. Acknowledging. Thanksgiving is one of those times where we come to say, God, it is you. It is you. All that I am is not by my power, neither is it by my mind. It is all of you. We have come to acknowledge you. And the Bible says, and it shall direct thy path. Whatever you have achieved this year will be a child play compared to what God is going to do. Can I say to you, there's, there's some things in life that you must understand. There are some things in life you can never change. I think I was saying it two Wednesdays ago. One of them is expressing the law of gravity for the scientists. And that law says, Whatever goes up, no matter how high, even a aeroplane shall surely come down. If you throw it up, and it went up, and it went up, it must surely come down. And the word of God said, when law increases, grace will multiply. We don't live by what we see. We live by what we believe. Do I have a witness in the house? Listen, let dollar become 2,000 to 1. Let uh, Naira become 2,000 to 1 dollar. If God allows it, are we here? And you are in the covenant with God. All I know, if he will not bring it down, grace will multiply. Are you here? Because the path of the just man shines brighter. And brighter, somebody shout brighter, shout it brighter, brighter. That is the will of God for you. Psalm 16, and verse 11 says, Thou shalt show me the path of life. That's a path of life that God is walking, so I walk. Jesus said, My father is walking, so I have to walk. God can show you a way and abandon you on that way. You have to build the consciousness that God is with you in every way and in every form that you have been connected. Come on, are we here? Now, go to verse 9 of Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 9. Okay, verse 8 says, take it, verse 7. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Be not wise in thy own eye. Verse 7. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Verse 8. It shall be held to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Now verse 9. 
Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. Honor the Lord. David was saying to his son, My son, God has made me so prosperous. And I am dying, but I'm owing no man. You remember somebody gave me a piece of land. And the person said, King, since you need to take it, he said, No. I will never take anything from you that costs me nothing. You know, some, some unwise men of God lead their congregation to the altar of thanksgiving and act like the Melchizedek. And they act like Melchizedek. No. If I'm your leader, I will lead. And leading does not mean that I will come the highest. Praise God. I will lead. To show example that I believe in what I'm showing you. That is leadership. You don't lead by saying, do it. You lead by example. David doesn't want Solomon to be so knowledgeable and to be so poor. I was asking my wife and Elizabeth, I hope our mothers have been taught the principles of prosperity in your Thursday meetings. And not just prayers. And they said yes. I'm sure the youth are being taught the principles of honor in their meetings. I'm sure the men are being taught the principles of honor in their fellowships. The men's fellowship is one of the most enticing fellowships because anytime you go there, you must eat well. Praise God. But my expectation is that there must also be a balanced fellowship. David said to Solomon, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And your father, I am dying. One of the things that made me one of the richest kings in Israel is that I place God first. In all my decisions, when I have a judgment, I place God first. When I have money, I place God first and the Lord. In all you are doing, in all you are increase. Because God is not a liar. God is not a liar. Every time you place God first, God goes before you. A fight the devourers. Praise God. Let me tell you, 2024 is not going to be a time to serve God in comfort. It's going to be a time and season of serving God in necessity. With urgency. What we are doing today is laying the foundation of our new year. Believing God that we will not just exist, we will be actively alive to come to God by this time next year. Are you here? So take it very, very serious. Don't take it lightly. I said, and with all the first fruits of thy increase, and that is why we got our thing. You know, honor with substance. Honor with substance. It is a, a team that is designed that we shall appear to God with a heart gratitude. Okay? Of what we feel that God deserves in our heart. Are we here? Apart from the value of what you are going to use for your thanksgiving, it is also resetting your mind that we hear that you don't appear to God to give you a feast of in gathering grudgingly God you know how it be me this year you know how things be this year no it's not an explanation it's either a function that you were not too conscious to know that this time will come praise God and that you need to plan for it. And last year I told you, plan for your feast of in gathering in advance. I will say here, what is verse 10 saying? Verse 10. When verse 9 is done, it says, So shall thy balm. What is balms? Storehouse, bank account, warehouses. Are we here? Where you store your yam, where you store your cocoa, he said, So shall your bombs be filled with plenty. 
Are we here? Nine is a commandment. Ten is the blessing. Ignore nine and start claiming ten. You are a joker. You can't have it. It's a response to your compliance. And thy praises. What is praises? Praises. You know palm tree. You cut it down. Alright? For those that used to drink palm wine. So set of people travel and they were coming back and the pastor was in their midst and the pastor saw palm wine. And the pastor stopped the car. Say he was so thirsty for palm wine. Praise God. And the guy was, was, was loaded with both pastors and men of God and other people of God. So they start wondering what kind of man of God is this one? Okay, so precious is the heart of the palm wine from where the wines draw. Are we here? Sometimes you get it wrong when you try to open the, the precious. And you open it in a bad spot, the wine will not flow. Are we here? The wine will not flow. They say, So shall your presence be, you know, shall burst out with new wine. And it's always very sweet. They call it sweet wine. Flavor. And that means that you will live and enjoy a good life. A good life. Life is so sweet when God is involved. And when God is connected. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Boy. For his mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. Go to chapter 6 and verse 21. Let me also show you that the, 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 the writer of Proverbs is not joking with these words. Chapter 6 of Proverbs, verse 21. He said, Bind these instructions continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. <laughs> That's a serious matter. That is a call to meditate on the word of God and to how the word stored in your heart. And the Bible said, Tie them on your neck. Verse 22. When thou goes out, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. Are we here? And when thou awakened, it shall talk with thee. It shall give you instruction. Did it stop there? Verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. A reproof of instruction are the ways of life. This is how I find what we're doing today. What we're doing today is called Feast of Engadren. It's a commandment. It's not a church doctrine. It's a Bible doctrine. It's not an optional culture. It's a mandatory culture. All right? It's something you have to do to stand and be in agreement with the hand of God on your life. Exodus 34 and verse 22. Let's see the instruction. When Moses went back, Moses went back for the second law. And when he returned, these laws were written. Exodus 34 from verse 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruit of wheat harvest, and the feast of a gathering at the year's end. Today's tent. At what? The feast of a gathering at the year's end. You should appear before the altar of God three times in a year. One and early in the year, maybe towards the middle of the year during our convention, and now December, the feast of a gathering. These four appearances are fundamental to whatever becomes of us in our work with God. And then verse 23 it says, verse 23 says what? Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God. The God of the God of what? 
Is it a commandment? It's a commandment. So if you don't appear, I will hear the devil will appear. Your appearance to the altar of God put all tasks against you on check. This man has appeared. This woman has appeared before me this year in obedience. Therefore, I have put a no-go mandate on their life. Look at verse 34. 24. Verse 24. Look at the blessings that follows it. The blessings are three blessings. Number one, I will cast out the nations. This nation talks about witches, devourers, powers, enemies. Somebody just called me this morning from the village and said he doesn't know the people that came when he traveled and they entered his house and they raped the daughter and butchered the daughter and killed the daughter. Alright? And that was a promising girl. Sometimes you don't know what is keeping you. But there are some things that God will never ignore when they have to do with your life. Praise God. There are nations everywhere. These four one night guys are going extra mile. They, 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 are, they attack my nephew in Maryland, US, from Nigeria here. And the guy have to close his three account. They duped him, they duped him up to $22,000. And some of those accounts are on credit, the father was angry. And I told the father, no. Once you start talking with those boys, they are so occultic that except you are prayer for, you cannot escape. Are we here? So your appearance to the altar of God will keep you from this pollution and poisons of the enemies that we can never tell. In my town of Washoko, some people came and parked before a woman who was struggling on her own, selling bags of rice. And they opened their bag and they loaded money and paid for the bags of rice. And the woman carried the money and kept somewhere. And they carried the rice and put it in the car. As soon as they moved out, the woman went to where the money was. The money had disappeared. She fainted. It's all over the social media. All right? You see, the appearance you don't want to appear will force the devil to appear. When you appear, the Lord will keep you from the devil, from their devourers. What mistake? All wealth and dreams will be shattered. Allow God to take charge. Number two, what happened? And a large die border. It means that I was telling you that this particular statement is so loaded. If you have 10 customers this year, God is saying, I will give you 20 next year. Amen. You are the one to place a demand on it. God has said it. Write down the scripture. Place a demand on the scripture. Don't, don't, don't follow God with a made-up mind. No. Don't make up your mind. Don't make up your mind. Allow the spirit to lead you by the word of God. The blessing say, by your appearance, I will enforce enlargement on every side. By this time next year, many of you will be ten times what you are today. If you are men, can be louder. Your blessing shall be faster. Are you still here? And the third one says, Neither shall any man desire thy land. Now, the question here is land. You how many of you have heard about Kenny Copland? Kenny Copland is one of the richest pastors in the world. He has an airfield, a private airfield. You know what is the highest cost in aviation business is landing and taking off and packing. Are we here? So it's not a problem to buy an aircraft. To pay the pilot is expensive. To park the aircraft per day in an airfield is money. Praise God. To land and take off is money. 
Those are the things that determine your air ticket. Praise God. The more expensive it is. Atlanta is the highest, is the most expensive airport in America. Because that airport is like, I don't know how, what they had in their mind. So once you are landing in Atlanta, your ticket must speak Atlanta. Atlanta. Praise God. And to take off from there to any other part of America is expensive. Where some airport can take hundred dollars, that one will be four hundred, three hundred. I, I don't like passing through there anymore. <laughs> Praise God. I studied it. God is talking about land. It's not just about having a land to build a house. Land is a title deed. What's land? It's a title deed. It has a content. Are we here? More than just what you put on it. If you are lucky, can a cop land sold his bicycle as a vendor who was selling or robot books? And they were launching the university and he said, I have been earning my living from this church. And now they are doing this thing. I don't have money. He offered his bicycle for sale. Is that not foolishness? Some months later, they called him that he has won a lottery. And when they, when they gave him the lottery, he had won a parcel of land. And when they gave him the survey plan of the land, the land was a gold field. So the government took over the land and placed him on royalty for life. That is the secret of his world. I am praying that I may be lucky one day like that. There's an art of obedience. An art of obedience. Read and you will understand. He said, and make sure that nobody do what? Desire thy land. One of the most contextual issues on earth is fighting for land. Fighting for land. You see some demonic brothers and uncles. If you are not lucky, your father has died daily. And they know your father has a good land. They will manipulate your mind. Make you lose your mind. Take all the land. Or, or even kill you to have the land. The demand for land is so, is so rich. And only God can fight for land. If you go to fight for land without God, be ready to die. Praise God. Land has a lot of content. But when you appear before the altar of the Lord, and God has preserved a land for you, anyone that rises against that land, God will rise up against them. Are you here? That is the law. And that is the blessing. Say, when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God, thrice in the year, I will renew these blessings at, at each appearance. So today, the Lord shall cast out the nation that are contending with your right. The Lord shall enlarge your coast. And by the grace of God, whatever belongs to you shall be handed over to you. Anyone that wants to take what belongs to you against your will, they shall, they shall have God to contend with. Praise God. So how do we make this honor? And how do we engage God in this honor? We have an example of Solomon. Praise God. And so we close with that. Second Chronicle chapter 1. Second Chronicle chapter 1 from verse 5. Moreover, the blessed altar that Bazalere, the son of Uri, the son of Hor, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, an altar inside the tabernacle. And Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. They decided to seek the altar of the Lord. I want to explain this. The article that Solomon brought is important. But what is important is that why did they come to the house of God? 
How did they approach the house of God? And why did the altar become so relevant before what Solomon came to the altar to do? You know, become very relevant. It was his first outing after God has made him a king. In the new year, can I say this to you? It doesn't matter what I've attacked your voice and make you a nobody. You will be a voice that no demon can stand. My God will make you a voice to your generation. The choice of Solomon was a confusion. He was the only one physically and conventionally not too legitimate to take over from his father. But he was the only one that had the right heart to be the king of Israel. And so when he became the king, he decided to do the first thing, and that is appear before the, the, the tabernacle, which is a cathedral like this, okay? You can come to this place without coming here. You can come to my office and go from there without coming here. You can visit any of your friends without coming here. You can be in this pew without coming here. Praise God. There's always a mystery when you are steered up in your heart to touch this altar. Are we here? It's the dwelling seat of the presence of God. What did Solomon come to do? Solomon come to do what they call burnt offering. Are we here? Do you know what they call burnt offering? It's a sacrifice that is not done in pity for the priest. You know, before now, the culture of our Thanksgiving at Bulado, you come with anything you like. If you look around now, I've not seen rice, I've not seen yam, I've not seen plantain. The culture has changed. That is why you are thick, strong, and big. Praise God. The center of the Feast of Incarnation is not the priest. If you do it with priests in your heart, you will not have the right blessing. You will have the blessing, but you will not have the right blessing. It is the altar as your target. The altar as your target. In Ezra 34, when they bring those wheat in those times, they will burn it. When they gather the wheat, they will burn it. It is the ashes of the wheat that the priests will use for their services. That empowers the altar, activates the presence of God to keep the Israelites for the next one year. Are you here? Now, when you also talk about the 1,000 cow that Solomon brought, Think about the cost of bringing 1,000 cow. How many trailers will take them? How many people will handle them? And the Bible say, he came with them for a burnt offering. So how many butchers? How many people will kill them? Who bear the cost of the transportation, the handling, the killing, the burning? And the Bible say, he burnt them at the altar of the Lord for a burnt offering. The result was that Solomon reigned for 40 years without a single war one day. That is the power of what can happen. One, 40 years, no war. 40 years, no war. He gave but the father ran for 40 years and every year the father fought war. What was the difference? The difference was that the sacrifice he placed at the altar fought every altar within the territory of Israel. I want you to do today what will fight every altar on your behalf through this altar in every place where God will be taking you to. I believe God you are returning next year better than you came this year. You are many suspects. That is one thing God gave him. Peace on the throne for 40 years. The next one year 
will be here absence of war. The Lord shall rise and terminate whatever that causes war around you. Even if the war come, you will have nothing to do with the war. Everyone behind the war shall see your God. They shall see the anger of your God. What is the second blessing? The Bible said that Solomon, you did not ask for long life. You did not ask for honor. You did not ask for riches. You did not ask for the head of your enemies. But all you did not ask for, I give you. All you did not ask for, I give you. I give you riches. In the next one year, you may have been meeting need. But in the next one year, God shall give you wealth. I wish I can hear a living amen. He did not ask for wisdom, but God gave him wisdom. In the next one year, God shall give you wisdom. You will not only have a job, you will be promoted on the job. You will be promoted and promoted on the job. You will not struggle to, to know what to do. Opportunities will be opening for you at will. In the name of Jesus. One of the prophecies for next year is that you will see yourself on top of a ladder without knowing how you got there. Praise God. So it's going to be a year that will be so mysterious. You are rising, you are climbing, your manifestation will be an amazement to your generation. In the name of Jesus. Are you here? He did not ask for the head of his enemies. But the five major enemies that fought his father died before the, the rain began. Every enemy that is within and that is without who is watching daily for you to come down they shall go down in your size in the name of jesus and they did not ask for honor but the reigning monarch in the world as at that time the queen of sheba heard about the news of his reign and kingship that's an honor People came up from abroad to come to honor him more like in the bush. Queen of Sheba is Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a center of civilization as at that time. And Queen of Sheba came. And when he saw Solomon, he said, what I heard about you is compared to nothing to what you are that I can see. And he said, your people are so happy. Your kingdom is so organized. You are so wealthy. You know that the queen of Sheba did not return. <laughs> Forget the other stories. <laughs> and he, he closed his monarch and submitted. He submitted to the monarch of Solomon. And Solomon was a king that liked women so much. So he expanded. Listen. Businesses will be closing not to submit to your business. Opportunities shall be hitting you on every side. It's going to be your year of possibilities. Why many saying it's impossible? You will be saying this is, this is possible. 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 Can I hear someone say it is possible? It's our face of gathering. And the Lord said, Our name is Dominion. And this year we are going to live a dominion. Anything that rises up up against you will come under your feet anyone that said you want to take your job they will lose your job come on over here anyone that said they will reign and rule over you you will be lifted up above them some of you will become controllers proprietors entrepreneurs in the name of jesus you will serve god with joy you will serve god with joy you will serve god with joy you will serve God with joy. Rest your feet and lift up your hands to heaven. That the end of our message for the feast of Ingharan. So remember these three things. What we shall be doing today will be a proof of our obedience to the command of God. Come consciously in the name of the lord it shall be an expression of our respect 
for the place of God in our heart. And again, it shall be a symbol of honor. Solomon did not ask for honor, but God gave him honor. Everything around him honored him. We'll be praying for you as you come. That God will honor you beyond your imagination. If you ask me, I will tell you we can close this meeting as quickly as possible. If you ask me, praise God. The prompting in my heart is to call families who say they have special thanksgiving. Praise God. You know we are maturing. We are maturing because our next year is year of growth. We'll give you opportunity to express yourself. But we can close this meeting as quickly as possible. Because I don't want a situation where one family will take 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and we stay here. At the end of the day, you start counting it against me. That I close you late. Sometimes, when we do Thanksgiving, the family will come and speak. Sometimes 20 minutes. When you shake the envelope, it does not worth our 20 minutes. Praise God. So what we are going to do is to be very sincere to ourselves. We have to be very sincere to ourselves. We need to know what to do. Now listen, this is what we are going to do. This church has two major needs. Two major needs. But we are going to face one. That one is, I told you last Sunday that the cost of diesel, the cost of diesel is a lament very alarming and if it continues like this we might not be able to retain our workforce praise god so the only option is let us put solar here do i have an agreement whether you agree or not that's what is in our heart let's put solar in this house and then um, this morning i was told that we need about 20 panels of 400 and, some, four, 400 and something works each. And that will be about 85,000 for one. And that means that if, one, if 20 family can give us one solar, meaning that you put light in the house of God, I think that will be good. Praise God. And we will need six battery, and one battery is 200,000. I told my wife, I said, if we are going to if we are the pastors and it's so demanding, let us believe God to give one battery. So I and my family we give one battery. But I've told my children that they have to give panels. And I'm not joking. I've told Samuel he had to give us one panel. I've told if he wears if he now with his uh, white. He will give us one panel. Where's happiness? Happiness will give us one panel. They are working. They have to know how to hold God. We have agreed in prayers, it has to be done. So let me now make another call. How many of you want to give us a panel? Remember, we have wire and the workmanship, almost one million something. Praise God. How many families would like to give us a battery or two battery and panel? Come to the altar. Let us pray for you first. That is what we want to do. If you have anything to say, we'll give you the time to say it. And please, we need the battery and the panel immediately this week. This week. This light must be here this year. Okay, come now. We'll not say you they do. We'll hear on a very shortly. Praise God. I say panel and battery. Panel, one panel is 85,000. Battery is 200,000. That's what we're starting with before we start matching families to produce one. And we need six battery. Six battery. That is what they told us. That we power here. Where is Shedrach? Shedrach. Leave the engine room. Come down. Believe God to produce a panel. Come down. We're waiting.
if you just come to the altar come to the altar it's an altar thing it's not something you are doing in your heart do yourself a favor come to the altar to present it at the altar praise god god is going to give you an opportunity It's, it's part of your thanksgiving. Praise God. These people that are coming, if they want to, to come up for another thanksgiving, fine. They, that should be your thanksgiving. Because that is what we've tied the thanksgiving to. We don't want to waste time today. Where the guys have called out. The young men are coming out. Wow. That's challenging. At that beginning. One, two, three, four. Hey, Sarah daughter. So good to have you today. Let's celebrate all the way We are the pioneering members of our choir. I know it must have fly down all the way from Abuja to be here. Praise God. making progress. Let's know. Let's know. I've already announced it. Yeah, they are not negotiating with you. One panel. Okay. So, you just capture it. Udo? Udo, he came out. What? One panel. Okay. So, we have, at the moment, we have three batteries. At the moment, we have three batteries. Uh, we have a lot of panels. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine panels. So we are waiting for 11 panels and three batteries. And will we get everything today? Because the three batteries include my own family battery. And my children are saying they will give you their own. Praise God. Hmm? Yes. He has already redeemed. Can we celebrate Jesus? Let us pray. I'd like you to, before this altar of God, ask God what you want. Solomon was at that altar. This article you are committing before God, this article you are committing before God, we speak on your behalf. But now I demand of you, because God asked Solomon, he said to Solomon, ask what you want. And Solomon said, I need understanding heart to govern the people. And God gave him what he did not ask. Father, we are grateful. This is an altar of the feast. And this is the appearance of your people. My wife, can you please come to the altar? And kneel down and ask God what you want. These daughters are busy in the kitchen. At the sound of my voice, as the head pastor of this cathedral, you committed yourself 
to power this altar to take away pressure and bring comfort to chase away darkness and bring light i ask the lord to receive your sacrifice can i hear a living amen I ask the Lord that you have given not out of burden, out of you have not given not out of comf comfort and convenience, but you've given out of necessity and call. Therefore, the Lord shall minister to your needs. He will chase away the nation that are before you. He shall enlarge your coast. At the time of famine, you shall be a solution in your environment. When men say that's a casting down, you shall be shouting that's a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy and I declare to you today, whatever belongs to you on the earth, it shall be preserved for you. Every altar that rises up against you, the Lord shall crush them. You will have the victory before the battles of life. And they gave to Solomon riches. And they gave to Solomon understanding heart. And they gave to Solomon wealth. And they gave to Solomon honor. Honor. That honor announced him publicly. Next year, you will embark on a journey you never planned for. It's a prophecy, a good journey, not a sudden journey. The Lord shall lift you up. He will honor your name in the land of the living. He will give you riches. He will give you wealth. He will give you attention. And whatever value, whatever value, this your sacrifice of feast of ingathering will live in this altar. He shall speak on your name and your family. In the name of Jesus. We receive it as a burnt offering. We leave it at this altar to be burning. It shall be light and fire on this altar. And we tie your name to it. Go and manifest. It's your year of possibilities. And dominion life. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Except if you are coming back with your family. But if you are not coming back, open your hand. Let me anoint your hand. Bless your wife. Go and meet her. So please put the account, put the uh, stampic account on the, screen, on the stream. And please start transferring the money immediately. Don't wait for money to come. Do it as a sacrifice. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. All right, so I uh, now leave uh, Pastor Dr. Mary to call up all the families together. Every family, call them out together. And we give them, those that want some, something to say, we give them microphone to say. And we pray for everybody at the same time.